Welcome back to Make Do. I'm David. And I'm James. So uh, what are we making today? Judging from that intro, I'd say something from Loki. Ah, right. That's right. We wanted to make the TVA stick thing. Time stick. Pruning stick? Time baton. Beat stick. Let's go with TVA stick. Yes. So we're making the time baton from the Loki TV series. This is the weapon used by the TVA to send people to the void at the end of time. We really wanted to make one of these after seeing episode one, but didn't get serious until we saw Odin over at Odin Makes put one together. We'll link his video below. He made a great discovery while building his that the base of the baton was just a flashlight. And he did a great job on his build, but there were a few things we thought we could do differently to make it feel a little more accurate. So let's get to work. As we mentioned, Odin made a great discovery while he was making his time baton. The base of the stick in the show seems to be made from some big old flashlight. So we went ahead and picked up the same flashlights that he used for his build. We're going to be using this as the base of our design. We couldn't find one with a red button like the one in the show, so we clearly aren't real fans. For the main body, Odin used the PVC pipe. While this looks great and is nice and hollow, we wanted to use something that was a bit more wooden. We could use wood. We also wanted to get that slight taper that you can see in the show, so we thought maybe a baseball bat, but the taper was a little bit too extreme and a little bit rounded looking. And then I found these table legs from Lowe's. With a little bit of trimming, we thought it would work perfectly. Link's in the description. So we picked these up and confused the cashier by buying a single table leg. Bonus points, we don't have to fake the wood grain now. So now we just need to figure out how to attach all these pieces together, which means we need to do some computer stuff. Now, as you can see, while I pretend to be on my computer, I designed some parts based on the scant reference I could find. I mean, seriously, you never get a clear shot of this damn thing. And here we have uh, <clears throat> my test parts. I made these to test the sizing and fit of everything, just to make sure I got the right look and feel of the parts. It was also helpful having the rough design to help determine what changes I wanted to make for the final round of prints. This is probably a process I should do more often, but I'm lazy. Never gonna see me do it again. Never. Maybe. We'll see. I don't know. No. Disco bye bye. We need to take the light part off of the flashlight. Leaving the flash? Mm -hmm. This is going to be replaced with 3D printed parts in the future. I throw it in the vise, using a towel to protect the finish. Then I grab the rusty old vise grips your dad gave you, then just sort of break it off. We'll be soldering new wires on later, so we aren't careful. For the pruny bit of the prune stick, we're going to be using a transparent resin. We did some tests and the resin tends to fog up a bit, but that will work perfectly once we install the lights. We're going to be printing on our AnyCubic Photon Mono X. Sponsor us. And of course, be sure to use protection when working with resin. The time lapse is really boring. <laughs> the print looks like it came out great.
I'll scrape this off. Dunk it into a tank of isopropyl that I definitely prepared beforehand. Then it goes for a spin in the cleaning station. After cleaning, I remove the supports. You can already see that it's starting to yellow, but again, this is going to work in our advantage. After a quick air dry, I drop it into the UV curing station, along with the supports. I always cure my supports because it's really important to not throw away any uncured resin. It's very crucial to put the lid on backwards first. And now that it's cured, it's safe to touch, and it's even closer to the color we're looking for. While I was designing this bit, I left the core hollow to eventually house some LEDs. We're going to be using these dense, warm white LEDs that should be able to run off of the batteries from the flashlight. But for now, let's just plug them in to do a quick test. It looks pretty good, but it needs to be a little bit more orange. We're going to try out this new stained glass spray from Krylon. We haven't used this before, so hopefully this doesn't ruin the print. Can't you just print another one? Well, that worked just peachy. No, it's tangerine. Oh my god. Hey, I broke this flashlight. That's great. Now we uh, have all the parts and we can move on to finishing. I did end up reworking some of the other parts to make them more accurate and just look nicer overall. The black parts here are printed in PLA, the gray in resin, and the yellow is just a stand-in while the pruning bit is drying. While I was redesigning, I tried to keep things as separate as possible to make sanding and painting a little bit easier on us and to make it feel more like a machined object. Apparently, they make this crazy stuff out of trees. It's called wood, and you can use 3D printing tools on it just like it was plastic. Wild. This table leg is going to make up the main body of the big bad beat stick, but needs to be trimmed down to size. We are trimming it down to about 15 inches, or about the size of three iPhone 7s. To cut this, we're going to be using a saw. It goes back and forth like this. Make sure the table leg is comfortable. Then we just saw it like we've used a saw before. There we go. Don't need this. Now this trim part should fit perfectly into the 3D printed parts. We're going to need to fish some wires through the length of the leg from the flashlight to our LEDs. So we need to drill a hole through the whole leg. First we take off this little metal part. We're going to be using this 18 inch spade bit, a hand drill, 
and a lot of patience. I only grab onto the leg after the bit is safely seated and not in danger of hopping out. If you have a drill press, could you please give it to us because this really sucked. Yep, that's a hole. Before we stain the wood, we're going to give it a light sanding. I'm told by the internet that this will make the stain penetrate the wood better and give us a better color. Wow, sanding wood is so much easier than 3D printed parts. We go over our PLA parts with 150 grit, then start moving up to finer grits to remove any lingering layer lines. We know sanding isn't the most fun part, but we have to do it to make the finished product look great. The nice thing about using wood is that we don't have to fake a wood finish. It's just wood. I use this honey flavored wood stain. Why do they flavor these? Anyway, it matches what we saw in the show the closest. Be sure to protect your work surface and hands. I think wood stain might stain. I use a cheap brush and apply a thick coat onto the wood. After it soaks into the wood, I wipe away the excess. This is the key to getting a good finish. It's not like paint, you need to wipe the stain down before it dries. I apply multiple coats to get a richer, darker color. Clear coat. We put it on the wood. It made it look more wood-like. After the first coat of primer is dried, I go back and do some more sanding, with some finer grit papers and finishing with steel wool. Buffing with the steel wool will give us a really nice surface that will help with the metallic finishes later. 
Now just enjoy some ASMR sanding. Gonna be using a mix of different flavors of metallic finishes. This will really showcase the details in the different parts and make the overall prop feel a little bit more real. It's the first time we tried these universal metallic paints from Rust Oleum, and we're pretty happy with the results. Sponsor us. The mixes of the gunmetal and the flat soft iron make a nice cohesive but still contrasting palette. To add just a little bit more detail, we're going to be using the only model paint that I own. This tester's flat steel, which isn't flat at all, or steel looking, will be a nice touch of silvery goodness. I grab my smallest brush, stop breathing, and add some detail. It is a small detail, but it really adds some depth to the overall piece. Okay, we can finally attach these rings to the main body of this connector piece. I have to sand the inside a little bit just to make sure it fits perfect. This fit is so perfect. We don't need this damn glue. That graphic was a lie. I need a new one. I sand down the inside of the other ring the same way. Then I friction fit it on as well. With the silver stripe and the gunmetal rings, I am really liking the level of depth and complexity this finish has already. Now that this is all almost done, let's risk the whole thing by adding some more paint. Probably should have done this earlier, but the bottom part does need to be black. You have to do this part, it's very important. So I'm going to mask off these parts here that I want to keep paint free. Just get some tape. Ha! You fools! I would never use this tape. Where's that other tape? I need the thinner stuff that's in here. So I have so many drawers. And there it is. Okay. This would then get a coat of flat black paint to match the flashlight. Kind of inconsiderate, but Energizer did put their logo on the flashlight, so we're going to cover that up with a little more of that same flat black paint we just used on the bottom of the connector. 
Now that the flashlight's dry, we can start putting this thing together. We still need to do some wiring, so we'll take care of this part a little bit later. I start by connecting our wooden baton into the connector. I designed the tolerance to be super tight, so a friction fit should work just fine. This top part is also technically a friction fit, but I do add some E6000 to help hold it on. In addition, I add a couple dots of super glue. This will help hold the piece in place while the slower curing E6000 sets up. This is the trick I learned from Adam Savage. Personally, we're like best friends. Don't look into it though. I might be lying. Also, this is a radially symmetrical prop. To get real nerdy, this means that we don't have to be careful about lining anything up because everything's a circle. I intentionally designed all the parts to align with the hole we drilled previously, so we can run the wiring from the flashlight to the pruning tip. I know what I'm doing, I know what I'm doing. This is our first wiring project, so please bear with us. I start by removing the original red wire, and cutting a new piece making sure it will be long enough to reach the end of the beat stick. I strip the end exposing the wire, I pre-tin the newly exposed wire with a little bit of solder. And add a little to the board as well. Then I heat up the solder on the board and attach the new red wire. Checking to make sure that it's secure. I then repeat the process for the black wire. I tie both wires to a skewer to help fish it through the assembled baton parts. Now I can solder the lights in place. We are using the casing from an old mechanical pencil to hold our LEDs inside of the pruning tip. Oh, that's where my pencil went. The LEDs we are using have an adhesive back making it really easy to attach. I take the LED strip and wrap it in a tight spiral around the casing. I try to keep the spiral tight to maximize the amount of light we can fit into the tip. The strips come pre-marked where it is safe to cut. I just snip these off then solder our positive and negative wires onto the exposed copper pads. Being extra careful not to melt anything, I pre-tin the pads.
Then I strip the red wire and attach it to our LED strip. I then do the same with the black wire. Now we can see if it works. <gasps> It actually works. It's, it, wow. It's amazing. <laughs> we did not really have any faith in our skills. This honestly worked the first try. It's beautiful. You can see with the pruning tip just how well the resin and orange paint diffuses the light. And the flashlight conveniently has two brightness settings. And a party mode. Hello everyone who skipped to the end, we can actually finally put this together. We're going to use a little more of this E6000 to glue this handle with the connector piece. I check to make sure the lights are still working after each step. Tuck all the excess wires into the cap. Again, checking the electronics still work. Place the light. Check again. Glue the light in place with some CA glue. Then glue the pruning tip on top. And check the lights again, just in case. Then I can add the cap. Adding a few drops of CA glue. Then there's one last ring that will cover the seam between these two parts and add just a little bit more detail. And that's it, we're done. Well, sh how are we gonna top this? I honestly have no idea. This is probably the nicest thing we've made. This is, I think, the first project we've done with any wiring and any built-in lights. And it's really nice that it's just hooked up to this regular switch to a flashlight because it just works and it just feels so satisfying to click the button on and off. Also, the weight of the wood and the metal it just makes it feel so legitimate. Yeah, and I'm a real big fan of the different finishes on here. Again, with the wood and the metal being actually wood and metal, it just lends that authenticity and the different tones of silvers and grays and gun metal just all kind of come together to make something that just feels realistic. Definitely one of the best things we've ever made. Oh, absolutely. Now we just have to keep it up. It was also really fun building something from a show, having to go off the scant reference we had and being able to match things to the screen and making something that was in a show and pulling it out and making it in real life was super satisfying. 
It was really cool diving into a wiring project. I definitely feel more comfortable moving into using lights more often in future projects. Maybe some lightsabers. Ooh, maybe a saber that's not light but is dark. Spoilers. Yeah, definitely expect to see more LED work in the future. This is definitely something I think that's kind of piqued our interest. Thanks again to Odin for inspiring us to make this project. Yeah, it was really helpful having him figure out some of the cool stuff about the flashlight and just the general form factor. Definitely go check out his video. If you're interested in making your own, we are going to be putting all of our files online along with a detailed part list. If you do end up making one, tag us on Facebook or Instagram. We'd love to see your builds. And be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell to stay up to date on all of our upcoming projects. We delayed some projects to make this bad boy and we'll be jumping back into a Pokemon project and a Star Wars project. And if you have an idea for a future project, just let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. It almost feels real.